Hello everyone, I'm back again, I'm Miss N.T. Matlangu from Kangala Tivet College. I'll be offering a lesson in Mathematics Level 4. Our section that we'll be dealing with today is based on exponents. Remember, previously I have introduced about eight exponential laws, and I gave you only two examples, and we didn't have enough time for me to can give you more sums. So today we proceed from there. We are going to do more sums on exponents. Let's quickly go to what's the board. The question is, Simplify the following expressions by using exponential laws. And we are told again that we must also leave our answers with positive exponents. Let's take the first sum. The first sum is 5 exponent 2x divided by 25 bracket, and we have exponent x outside the bracket. Here is our, first, exa our first example for today. Remember, the question is simplify by using exponential laws. When dealing with exponents, there must be basis, there must be exponents. So if you can check here, in our numerator we have base 5, in our denominator, we have base 25. So it is not possible for us to apply the exponential laws if the bases are not the same. It is possible here for us to change 25 and write it as base 5 to the power 2. Hence, our bases will be the same. Right. Our first step is we bring down our numerator as it is. We change 25, we write it as 5 exponent 2. Because 5 exponent 2 is the same as 5 times 5, and it gives us 25. And then already here, we have exponent x. Remember, there is another um, law that I have explained to say, if you have an exponent which lies outside the bracket, that exponent will multiply the exponent which is inside the bracket. So we'll have now 5 to the power, 5 to the exponent 2x over 5 to the exponent 2 times x is 2x. Now we have similar bases with a division sign between them. What we do is we apply the, the law which I said is law number 2. We write, the common we write the common base, which is 5, and then we subtract our exponents. So this will be now exponent 2x minus exponent 2x. We subtract them because there is a division sign between our bases, which are the same. And then if you subtract, we bring down, let's bring down our base first. And then what is the difference between 2x and 2x? The difference is 0. So now we are having 5 to the exponent 0. There is another law which I explained to you. If I remember well, I wrote z to the exponent 0, and I said z to the exponent 0, you don't have to crack your head. I said any number to the exponent 0, you, sub you replace that with 1. So our final answer here is positive 1. We are done with our first example. Let's take one more sum. Nine to the power, nine to the exponent three x multiplied by twelve exponent two x plus two over four exponent 2x plus 4 multiplied by 9 exponent 4x plus 1. 
So we are given 9 exponent 3x multiplied by 12 exponent 2x plus 2 over 4 exponent 2x plus 4 multiplied by 9 exponent 4x plus 1. The question is still the same. Simplify by using exponential laws and your final answer must have positive exponents. Right. If you can check here, remember I said when you have to apply the exponential laws, you check your basis. It will be easy for you to apply the exponential, ba uh, exponential laws if your bases are the same. Here we have base 9, base 9. These two we can work them out together. And then we also have 4 and 12. But then 4 and 12 are not the same bases. Hence, I'm going to factorize 12. But again, when I factorize 12, I'm going to use ex uh, factors 3 and 4. How am I going to work with 3? Because I don't have 3 here. It means that I must also factorize this 2. So this will be now 3 exponent 2. 3 exponent 2 is 3 times 3, which gives us 9. So already here we have 3x. We write it here. This 3x will multiply the new exponent, which is 2. Multiply it by 3 multiplied by 4. These two are the factors of 12. And both of them, I took them from this 12. Hence, they must have the same exponent, which is 2x plus 2 and 2x plus 2. Are you still with me? And then denominator, our denominator, we have 4 exponent 2x plus 4 multiplied by, I'm going to write that one also as 3 exponent 2, and then we already have exponent 4x plus 1. Let's proceed. Our, I don't have to write the equal sign. Our base, we have base 3. Our new exponent now, it's 2 multiplied by 3x. It gives us 6x multiplied by 3 exponent 2x plus 2 multiplied by 4 exponent 2x plus 2 all over 4 exponent 2x plus 4 multiplied by 3. Let's open the bracket here. 2 multiplied by 4x, it's 8x. 2 multiplied by 1, it's positive 2. Right. If you can check now, we have base 3, base 3, and base 3 in our denominator. So these three, we are going to work them out together. And then we also have another base, which is 4 and 4 also. These ones, they will be combined together. Right. Now that we have similar bases, we can apply the exponential laws. I'm going to write the common base, the first common base, which is 3. 3 exponent 6x. Between this 3 and this 3, we have a multiplication sign. And if that is the case, remember I said if you have a multiplication sign between similar bases, you add your exponents. So we are going to have exponent 6x plus 2x plus 2. Two. We don't change the signs. Plus 2x plus 2. We are not done with base 3. We still have another base 3, which is written in our denominator. This simply means that between these three, these two threes, which are written in the numerator, and this one, there is a division sign. So this one, when we write it, or when we wa if we want these exponents to join those exponents, we are going to change the signs of this exponent because we are subtracting. The law says if there is a division sign between similar bases, this basis and this one, there's a division sign we subtract. In other words, we change the signs. So this one becomes negative 8x, and then this one becomes negative 2. Multiply it by, we are done with base 3. Now we proceed to base 4. Multiplied by base 4, 
In our numerator, we have 2x plus 2. 2x plus 2, we write it as it is. And then between this base and this one, we have a division sign. So our bases, when we write them in the numerator there, this one's our exponents, sorry. When we take them to the numerator, we change their sign, we subtract because of the division sign that lies between these two similar bases. So we are going to write these exponents as negative 2x and negative 4. Minus 2x minus 4. I hope you are still with me. Let's proceed. Right. We check our like terms. We add or subtract them. 6x plus 2x is 8x. Minus 8x, it's 0. So we are no longer having variable x in our uh, exponents. And then we have 2 minus 2 is also 0. So we are now left with 3 exponent 0 because these two, they cancelled that one. And this one cancelled the negative 2. Are you with me? Multiply it by, let's write base 4, 2x minus 2x, it's 0. And then 2 minus 4, it gives us negative 2. So our exponent here is negative 2. And then we apply one of the laws which I have explained in the previous lesson. Any number to the exponent 0 is 1. We substitute by 1 here. We multiply by 4 exponent negative 2. We cannot bring down 4 exponent negative 2 at this stage because we are heading towards our final answer. And it was stated, it, state, it is stated clearly that our exponents must be positive. Hence, we are going to introduce a fraction. We are going to write this as 1 over 4 with a positive exponent now. And then we multiply. 1 multiplied by 1 over, what is 4 times 4? It's 16. So this will be 1 over 16. This is our final answer. I hope you understood it. Our next example, I'm going to write it as example number 3 because I've already done two examples for today. Um, 2 exponent x plus 2 exponent x plus 3 all over 2 exponent x plus 2. Okay. Uh, in our numerator, we have 2 exponent x plus 2 exponent x plus 3. Right. You must be careful now. Yes, the bases are the same, but we have an addition sign between our bases. You cannot apply the exponential law if you have an addition or a subtraction sign between your bases. You must come up with another method to solve or to simplify your expression. So in this case, my first step, I'm going to bring down two exponent x as it is and then I'm going to write this one as two bases. I'm going to separate it into two bases. Two exponent x plus two exponent x multiplied by two exponent three. Why do I do this? This is the same as uh, reversing what we did when I explained the first law. First law is, if you have a multiplication sign between similar bases, you add the exponents. So before they got this, this is what they had. Are you with me? Right? Our denominator, we are going to do the same thing. We write 2 exponent x multiplied by 2 exponent 2. That is our first step. And then from this stage, 
I check my numerator. Two exponent x, before I go there, if you can check, your numerator has two terms. Remember, our terms in an expression are separated by an addition or a subtraction sign. So here I have two terms. I'm going to take out the common factor here. Two exponent x is common because there's two exponent here in my first term and there's also two exponent x in my second term. So I take out two exponent x as my common factor and then I open the bracket, I divide throughout by my common factor and then I know what remains inside the bracket. Two exponent x divided by my common factor, it's one. Two exponent x multiplied by two exponent three divided by two exponent x. I'll be left with two exponent three. Positive two exponent three over two exponent x multiplied by two exponent two. I hope you are still with me. Right, between my <coughs> common factor and the bracket. There is no addition or subtraction sign. Hence, I'm allowed to divide this two exponent x by this two exponent x. We are left with one here. Most of you, they like to say we cancel or they cancel each other. That is also allowed because there's no addition or subtraction sign here. Even here, there's no addition or subtraction sign, right? Let's proceed to the next step. <coughs> In our numerator, we are left with 1 plus 2 exponent 3, which is 8. 2 exponent 3, remember I said 2 exponent 3 is not 2 times 3, but 2 exponent 3 is 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. That is why we have 8 here over 2 exponent 2 is the same as 2 multiplied by 2. It gives us 4. 1 plus 8 is 9. Our denominator is 4. This is our final answer. We are done with the third example. I hope you are still watching. I will take one more example. Hopefully, I'll be able to explain other laws. <coughs> this is example number four for today. It's cube root of 125, x5, y5, all over 343, x exponent 2, y exponent negative 1. And then outside the bracket, uh, we have exponent negative 1. Right, this is our expression. It's cube root. Inside the bracket, we have 125, x exponent 5, y exponent 5, all over 343 x exponent 2, y exponent negative 1. And then outside the bracket, as you can see, we have exponent negative 1. The question is still the same. We want to simplify the expression using exponential laws, and our final answer must have positive exponents where possible. Right, let's proceed. My first step here, I'm going to change this expression, I'm going to write it in exponential form because now it's written in root form. So 
to change this, inside the bracket I'm going to have 125 x exponent 5, y exponent 5, and the denominator is 343 x exponent 2, y exponent negative 1. Outside the bracket, I have exponent negative 1. I do not want to write the root sign again. So this cube is going to be written now as exponent 1 over 3. And it's going to, it must multiply the negative 1, which is already there as our exponent. This is the first step. We change from root sign to exponential form. From root form to exponential form. Right, let's proceed. I don't have to write this again. Let me multiply here and write our current exponent. Our current exponent now is going to be negative 1 multiplied by 1 over 3. It's negative 1 over 3. Hence, we don't need this anymore. Let's proceed. Uh, if you want to, there are two ways of opening this bracket. It's either you take this negative 3, you multiply the exponents which are already there. Or before you open the bracket, you simplify, you simplify what is inside the bracket first, and then you multiply by the exponent which lies outside. Or another method, remember I explained it to you to say, if you have a negative exponent outside the bracket, you can change it to a positive exponent, but then you must rearrange your fraction. Let's do that. This becomes 343x squared y exponent negative 1 over 125x exponent 5, y exponent 5, all to the exponent positive 1 over 3. I have changed from a negative sign to a positive sign. Hence, the fraction also, its status changes. The, numerate, the denominator becomes my numerator, and the numerator becomes the denominator. I hope you can notice that. Let's proceed. <coughs> My next step from here, I'm going to change these two numbers and write them in exponential form, being guided by the denominator of the exponent that lies outside. The denominator of this uh, fraction, pardon me, the denominator of the fraction here is positive 3. So if it is possible for me to write 343 as a number to the power 3, I'm going to do that. Luckily, we do have such a number. 7 to the exponent 3 is 343. So I'm changing this one. I'm writing it as 7 cubed x squared y exponent negative 1 over 125 also can be written as 5 exponent 3 and then x exponent 5, y exponent 5, and then outside the bracket, I still have exponent 1 over 3. And then from this stage, I'm going to open my bracket. In other words, I'm going to multiply all the exponents which lies inside the bracket by the one which is outside. But because of time, let me use another method. Let me simplify these ones first. Then I'll, up, I'll multiply by the exponent which lies outside. Um, 7, OK, let me write the numbers first. 7 exponent 3 and 5 exponent 3. My variables, I have uh, x exponent 2. I subtract 5 because there's division sign. And then for y, I have negative 1. And then I subtract 5 because of the division sign. I still close my bracket with exponent 1 over 3. And then these two, there's another law of exponents. 
I think I dealt with it when I was teaching maths N3. If the exponents are the same, you are allowed to write this as 7 over 5 because they share the common exponent. Multiplied by x exponent negative 3, 2 minus 5 is negative 3, and y exponent negative 6, all to the power 1 over 3. And then from this step, I can open my bracket. I'm going to multiply all these exponents by the one that lies outside. So it's going to be 7 over 5 exponent 3 multiplied by 1 over 3 multiplied by x exponent negative 3 multiplied by 1 over 3 and y exponent negative 6 multiplied by 1 over 3. Let's multiply. 3 multiplied by 1 over 3, it gives us 1. So for our numbers or the coefficient, we are left with 7 over 5. And then let's go to the next, uh, to the first variable, which is x, negative 3 multiplied by 1 over 3. This gives us negative 3 over 3, which is negative 1. So here we have x to the exponent negative 1. And then the next variable or the next base, it's y. Negative 6 multiplied by 1 over 3, it's negative 2. Negative 2. Remember, I said every exponent that lies inside the bracket is affected by the exponent which lies outside the bracket. Hence, I'm going to multiply this, this uh, exponent by 1 over 3. This exponent also, I multiply it by 1 over 3. This one also, I multiply it by 1 over 3. I hope it is clear. Then we proceed. 3 multiplied by 1 over 3, it gives us 1. So I'm going to simply open the bracket. And then negative 3 multiplied by 1 over 3, it gives us negative 1. Here's our negative 1. The last base, negative 6 multiplied by 1 over 3, it gives us a minus 2. This is our answer, but it's not the final answer because it is stated clearly that we must leave our answers with positive exponents. So let's proceed. Let's change this and that one to positive exponents. We bring down 7 over 5 multiplied by. We change this into a fraction. It becomes 1 over x with a positive exponent now. Multiplied by 1 over y with a positive exponent now. And then my final answer, I'm going to combine all of these. 7 multiplied by 1 by 1, it gives us 7 over 5 multiplied by x multiplied by y squared. It gives us 5xy squared. 5xy squared. This is our final answer. This brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Hopefully you understood what I explained. For further questions, please find us on our college social media platforms and the college Facebook. Thank you. Bye.